Hello everyone and welcome to LabGab, a live stream variety show that showcases events, destinations, and different talents across Second Life. I'm your host, Strawberry Linden. Today on our show, we have a very special guest. His name is Chris Pranoski, who is he is an animator, director, producer, and owner of Titmouse Incorporated. Welcome to the show, Chris. Hey, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? How's the pandemic treating you? Well, it's weird, like <laughs> like everybody, but uh, you don't look at this. We're in Second Life. We could be in Hollywood, even exactly. though I'm not actually in Hollywood right now. This is our Titmouse studio built in Second Life, our parking lot, and I'm not there, but I'm there. <laughs> so I heard it, actually, uh, the studio looks very much like what we have built here in Second Life. Yeah, yeah, it really, really, really looks like it. You know, it's it's great. Uh, uh, I, I, the the Lindens, the moles, everybody was great in, in helping make this thing and and really make it look like a kind of shabby Hollywood studio instead of a fancy one. It's 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 really accurate. It, it looks fantastic. I'm gonna uh, talk more about that uh, a little bit later on the show and cam around a little bit. Um, I thought first we'd get a little bit of an introduction about you. Can you tell us a bit how you got started in the animation industry? Yeah, you know I liked drawing pictures when I was a kid and um, I uh, you know would make weird movies with my friend <laughs> like he had a video camera and then I was like maybe drawing pictures and movies could be combined into something he, he ended up going to NYU film school he's a couple years older than me and I was like or a couple grades ahead of me and I was like uh, hey maybe I could go to a school like that for art and animation and then I ended up going to the School of Visual Arts in New York oh. and learning animation and because uh, I grew up in New Jersey and that was like the big art school they're really good at promoting themselves and then ended up working at MTV in New York uh, you know on Beavis and Butthead and a bunch of shows there at Daria so on and so forth and and that really launched it uh, for me you know going to New York and, and being around that New York animation scene and I've uh, been doing it ever since. Sounds like fun. Uh, actually, since you mentioned Beavis and Butthead, um, when I shared this on our Second Life socials yesterday, somebody in the socials asked me to ask you about the trippy scene in the Beavis, Beavis and Butthead movie. Can you tell us yeah. about that? <laughs> yeah, that was the very first like job that I was like that I got a director credit on. Like that was the very first thing they let me direct. I worked in. Wow. boards on the show and layout and different things on Beavis and Butthead and in that movie and on the movie I worked in boards and, and layout and then you know they had this scene what was lucky for me was all the other directors on the show were working on the scenes that had to look like the show and I had done some weirdo MTV like station IDs or things for the for the for the video music awards that were kind of weird and I guess uh, Yvette Kaplan the director was like hey maybe Maybe Chris would be good for this sequence, and Mike agreed, and it was great because he was developing King of the Hill at the time out in L.A. All right. and was busy, so we would fly out. I would fly out to L.A. and hang out with him, like, you know, hang out in the corner of his office at Fox or drive with him. They, for some reason, I didn't have a rental car, so I'd just drive with him to work and drive with him back to Paramount if he had meetings and stuff and draw in my sketchbook and hold it up to him like, how's this? And like, that's, that's pretty cool. And then uh, what was interesting is originally it was meant the movie was meant to kind of come to a screeching halt mm -hmm. and like they were meant to like it was a device where it, they could replicate like watching a music video like they did in the show. Right. Yeah. They could comment on this thing. And it was originally like two and a half minutes long. And it really did like make the movie like hit a brick wall and stop. So it's 45 seconds in the existing movie. But there is a cut, I think, floating around on the Internet. Uh, that's that's the actual the full two and a half minute thing. Um, I, I don't think they've ever officially released it. You probably have to hunt it down so through some oh. nefarious way. <laughs> so yeah. so then you got into Titmouse. So Titmouse is known for some very popular shows seen across a number of channels and streaming yeah. services like Big Mouth on Netflix and Star Trek yeah. Lower Decks on Paramount Plus and many many more. Yet, I understand that Titmouse didn't necessarily start out initially as an animation-focused company. So what are the origins, and how did Titmouse evolve to where it is today? Yeah, you know, um, you know, I was working in animation, and I was like, 
I had started, I was working on a film mm -hmm. with a character that I called Titmouse and I had called my student films. I kind of put a little end card, called him Titmouse. Mm -hmm. Just thought it was a stupid sounding name. Uh, and uh, I just thought it'd be fun. I, I, I made t-shirts for my film when I was working at MTV and sold them. I was like, oh, this t-shirt thing is fun. So when we started Titmouse, my wife and I, we originally started as a t-shirt company and we would, this was in the early really? 2000s. Yeah. And wow. we would, we would just that would draw designs and we'd put them up there and, and sell them and uh, still make little cartoons to go with the t-shirts, mm -hmm. which is like an added bonus. Buy this t-shirt, watch the cartoon of the character that's on this t-shirt. <laughs> but that was, it was harder back then. Like I think we put that website up in 2000. You could probably go in the, the way back machine and yeah. find, find it and see <laughs> people modeling t-shirts see what i looked like back then with the t-shirt on and then uh and then it just like it ended up being a business that that wasn't really worth do, like doing for us like i think we probably would have had to do that full time but in the meantime i was working at the studios and and directing commercials and you know yeah. main title sequences and stuff and we kept getting freelance work and we just started running the freelance animation work through the titmouse company because it made more sense and then it just gradually not even gradually pretty quickly evolved from being a t-shirt company to an animation studio but it was entirely accidental like i went full-time titmouse in 2004 like it took a few years uh, i was still working at, at, at real jobs so-called real jobs like at disney or cartoon network or wherever yeah. um up until 2004 so you just started pitching shows and got picked up and so forth, I guess. That's how it kind yeah, of... Yeah, all sorts of things. I mean, Tin Mouse, in, in, in the beginning, we did a lot more commercials, short form stuff, a lot of main title sequences. Yeah. The Osbournes main title right. back in the olden days, a bunch of weirdo stuff. And then, uh, you know, and then we started doing pilots. We used to be in a storefront. It was this old TV repair shop and people would come in and they'd be like you can't do a tv series and i'm like man if we got a tv series we just rent more space but i could tell in hollywood it's a lot about perception so we ended up getting this building not this big lot that we had a much smaller building around the corner of this on uh lexington in hollywood probably looked that up on the internet and that was our main studio it still is our main building of our studio our reception and our lobby in l.a and that's when we started getting series work, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, you could do a real show. Look at you. Now you got a building. Um, and the first series we did was Metal Metalocalypse for Adult Swim, which I, I, I have a real fond place in my heart for that one. That that one was one that I was really involved with and, you know, directed episodes and was involved in every aspect of it. And, and that was such a fun show, a magical time for our studio. So you really started from the ground up with Titmouse. What was the craziest show that you've ever pitched and did it get picked up? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I mean, the crazy ones. We've done so many pilots, so many things that the world has never seen. I can't, you, know, you know what mm -hmm. is one of my favorite things that no one will ever see? And I don't even think you could find this on the Internet. But we did a pilot that I directed for Major Laser. The, the band for Adult Swim. And then they ended up doing a, a series way later for Fox for their ADHD block. But the, the pilot that we did was so weird and so crazy and really was meant to look like a kind of kind of like old 80s cartoon, but even cr crunchier than that. I can't even describe it. It was so strange. Like no one can but, see it now. <laughs> yeah, because the rights are locked up. You know, it's like Adult Swim produced yeah, that one, yeah. but then their option their license ran out with major laser and then major laser did the deal with Fox. So I don't think it could ever be seen. I don't even know if I'm allowed to talk about that, but <laughs> that was, that was years and years ago. So hopefully uh, you, you won't get any uh, <laughs> legal action. Yeah. Uh, so of all the shows you've worked on, do you have one that you would say is your favorite and which one is the most misunderstood? Well, Me metal Ocalypse is definitely my favorite. It was my yeah. favorite experience and my favorite, uh, probably show uh beavis and butthead also has a a fine place because that's where i started you know that was one of my first shows that i worked on and, and spent years at mtv working on that and the head and daria and the show downtown that i created at mtv 
And actually, I can say this now because it's been announced. We're doing the new Beavis and Butthead movie that's <gasps> going to premiere on Paramount Plus. Oh, so nice. that'll be fun. We're doing that at Tip Mouse. So that's back back to my roots. You know, good to that's know. Be, yeah, uh, I don't know. I think I could talk about when it comes out or anything, but uh, but they've announced that that movie is going to happen. Uh, nice. So that's cool. So, um, what shows are currently in production? Well, we've got. Let me see. I got to think about. That's another one that we got to talk about. What's been announced, right? Because mm-hmm. yeah. I can't talk about like probably half of them, but definitely you 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 will see more Big Mouth. You'll see a, a spinoff of Big Mouth called Human Resources. Uh, there's a couple more Netflix shows that I, I don't know that I could talk about. Uh, more Star Trek Lower Decks. Nice. It's coming out. Um, some other shows for uh, Amazon and Paramount Plus. I don't think I could talk about. There's a cool one called um, Pantheon that's going to be on AMC. That's a kind of sci-fi drama in the that's vein new? of like that'll be. Yeah, I'm right. not sure when that's coming out, but that's going to be a, a really cool show that's been announced. Uh, that's like a, more in the vein of like a Black Mirror or something. Um, oh, really? And then uh, I think one that's that has a lot of buzz on the internet and and especially in like kind of nerdy communities. Uh, which I don't know might have an overlap in the second life. I use nerdy as a as a compliment. Uh, is uh, the critical role uh, Vox Machina that we originally did as a Kickstarter campaign uh, with the critical role uh, guys and uh, man that took off. That raised a lot of money and then uh, all the distributors uh, kind of called us and we're like, "What are you doing with that show?" And then we ended up doing a a deal with Amazon and we're making even more episodes than. Uh, than what we did in the original Kickstarter with Amazon, that that'll be cool. I think you guys are all gonna like that. It's very, very, very true to the spirit of the the stream. Uh, if anybody watches watches Critical Role, and yeah, actually, the- we got a question. We got a question in front on the socials about that. Somebody asked me to ask you about the Critical Role Tid Mouse D and D campaign. That yeah, that- it's great. I've just it's gonna be really cool that show. I mean, for people who are into that show i think it's going to be a bullseye for them and hopefully it'll bring more people from the non dungeons and dragons non fantasy role-playing game non critters critters is what they call fans of the critical role right. uh stream if you didn't know that uh critters so we're hoping that all the critters will feel that this show is for them but we're also hoping that people who are not yet critters will also dig it uh that is our plan I know many people are definitely looking forward to it. Um, mm-hmm. Something really unique about Tip Mouse is that it has an annual event called the Five Second mm-hmm. Animation Day. And yeah. for a limited time, the Second Life community can watch this year's contributions 24-7 in a virtual cinema where we're sitting right now. It's playing behind us. Um, and it's it's available all month uh, over here. So can you tell us a little bit about Five Second Animation Day. What is it? How did it get started? And why did you bring it into Second Life? Yeah. So, um, my wife Shannon, who's the co-founder, co-owner of the studio, like maybe, and it's a while ago now. It could be maybe even fifteen years. It's been going on where she just had an idea for morale. Like, how about one day we don't work on any jobs? Like, we just let the artists make whatever they want, and then we'll like screen it at the end of the day, right? Mm-hmm. Or at the end of the week to give them some time to like edit it or sound design it or whatever and at the time we were like make a five second long film because that's what's reasonable to make in a day right you know we didn't want to make it too too crazy and everybody had so much fun in the early years there's a lot of inside jokes and a lot of really offensive like animators trying to out outdo each other with their offensive content um over the years it's grown and grown and people have teamed up and they've done way more elaborate films and most of them way longer than five seconds yeah and it's really broadened out you'll still find some offensive films you know people still like to do do that for fun but there's all sorts of films there's sweet films and touching films and cute films and we don't censor anything so you don't know we always put a disclaimer on it when we would screen those in movie theaters which we did pre-pandemic Right. I wouldn't watch anything until the night of the screening. So I even I would oh, enjoy it very first a surprise time. for you. <laughs> so I would make a disclaimer. It's like, hey, we don't censor anything. So if you are, you know, if you are easily offended, like maybe you shouldn't yeah. be here because I don't know what is going to be on this screen. <laughs> and, uh, you know, 
and it's yeah. uh, it's pretty cool. This year, it, it, it spans all different kinds of films. You'll see you'll see all different types. And we went into Second Life because it felt like a cool transition. Like Second Life is a you know it's very malleable. You know it's much more so. You know we could have done it in Fortnite or Roblox or Minecraft or whatever. But Second Life feels more. I don't know. It felt right for me, and I also did mess around in Second Life like back. You know, more in like 2006 when it was, uh, you know, it had its like first first uh, surge, yeah. um, and 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 you know, since we couldn't do do, you know, these parties and these screenings in in the real life, Second Life seemed like a great option, and we did this Smash Party first, which is a party we did in real life where we would build a cage and smash items, and and uh, and you know, we we the the everybody at second life the linden labs and all the moles and everybody have been great at helping build this stuff up it's, it's been amazing yeah actually the smash party was in second life uh the set is still here maybe at the end of the show we can go in and smash some stuff but right that on. was back in september i believe uh where yeah. you had that um, that's right so actually last friday there was a premiere event in second life with several mm -hmm. vips what was that like and who all attended can you tell us about that that was cool, you know. I saw some some of some of the. I saw comedian Ron Lynch from oh, yeah. the Tomorrow Show. I saw him, who does a lot of voices for our shows. I saw uh, writer Adam Mariano, who's written on Super Jail and Ballmasters. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else. I was there. And some other show creators were there. Dave, Dave Foss, who is a commercials director, who directed. You know, we shot. We actually shot B roll at that party for a uh, a. Um, a 60th anniversary uh, video for uh, the Annecy Animation Festival, which we won't be attending in real life because of the pandemic. And I felt like it was appropriate to shoot a virtual uh, congratulations video for a virtual festival. And uh, we had people, that's where there's a green screen set up over there. People were dancing around and stuff. Right. And I think there's a birthday cake on top of the, on top of the warehouse now for that purpose it was uh, really fun it came out really good um i think annecy will put that on their social uh pretty soon maybe maybe we can link it to a second life thing so the second life community can enjoy it as yeah, well for sure uh so the vips were they already in second life from before or they just came for the event no or? they weren't well i guess it depends like yeah some of them had joined second life for the smash party right, right, right they're like oh so they use that avatar some of them you know were in second life already so they knew it you know some uh, the, i feel like those are more the artists that work for you know work at the studios right um and then some people yeah we're coming in for the very first time where it's like what do i do how does this work <laughs> you know? so learning the experience for them hopefully they'll like it yeah i remember out. my first you know like times in second life way back in 2006 it was it was kind of like whoa what am i doing i don't know what to do I, I mentioned this with drax where you know i walked into somebody's house and my avatar was i tried to make it look like me with just and <laughs> since i based on the fireman model which was one of the early models back then i still had i couldn't figure out how to drop the axe so i was walking around with an axe and people were like whoa even though people are like you know they're like a lot of them were like elaborate demons or like furries with machine guns. Right. For some reason, they were scared of me because I was just a human with an axe. Like, it's, I didn't look that's like, a little scarier, yeah. actually. Just yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's funny because, you know, people I walked into people's houses and they're like, "What are you doing here?" And I'm like, <laughs> "I'm new." And then they, they, they'd be nice to me, or, or like one one person, I remember they were like, it, it was like an elaborate furry with a big gun, right, and. <laughs> I was talking to, to, to them and they were like, well, what, do, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I don't know what's there to do. And they're like, you could do anything. I'm like, well, is there, a, and I wasn't really saying that I wanted to do this, but I was like, is there a, a, a game or something? You know, I was still trying to figure it out back then. They're like, oh, you want like a, like a, like a shooting game? I'm like, sure. And they're like, you should go to Carnage Island. And I'm like, what's Carnage Island? And they're like, I'll teleport you there. And they teleport me to Carnage Island. And there's people running around shooting with guns and stuff. And there, and I had the axe. And somebody <laughs> runs so up to me and like, right "What in? are you doing?" What? They're like, "You're crazy! You're 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 going in there with an axe! Like that's that's suicide! Take this!" And they give me this big gun. And I don't know how to use it, and I'm just running. You know, I'm like the, the 
noob guy, like running into walls and stuff, like, you know, not knowing how to work the controls. And uh, yeah. <laughs> this is all back in 2006? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the, the community, I think, was a lot different back then. Uh, I think there were, you know, whatever people, there was a lot more new people joining yeah. at the time. I think like me, who people were like, oh, you got to do this. You got to try this out. Um, it's interesting. Uh, so it, you have had it, a chance to explore SL beyond just the tip mouse event space. Yeah, were you yeah, a back, regular yeah. resident since 2006 or did you take a break? No, or? I took a long break. Like I didn't really, I wasn't aware that Second Life had continued to thrive. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just kind of got, I'll tell you, this is a, a story that maybe some Second Life residents can relate to you know I, I i got a little too too into it mm -hmm. for a minute and my wife was like what are you what are you doing all on the, <laughs> on the computer all the time and i'm like i'm on second life she's like second life what about first life <laughs> you know, kind of convinced me to take a break for a while and then i just kind of got out of the habit of, of visiting i don't even know what happened in my original account it, it, i can't remember my login so it's 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 you know yeah. it's in the it's in the you know in the ether of the internet now <laughs> somewhere <laughs> it will probably never be activated again this is now my new my new second life account so, i like the i like the look that you have going here too. oh thanks yeah, yeah 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 i had someone help me uh make it actually uh again uh the lindens made me such a great uh model you know but it was too handsome it was too attractive for me so i went on uh fiverr and got actually i did the fiverr one first and they're like whoa don't you want a better one it's like sure but then i was like i'm oh, too handsome i don't want people to think i have an ego where i want to look like a like a really fit, everybody looks like a fashion model in second so, life yeah yeah so this one is a little still still my arms are more muscular on this model than in real life. but my butt's as big as this butt uh, that this guy has um but uh, someone, I found their name on, uh, I hired someone on Fiverr mm -hmm. who, who helped me uh, put together, made the hat and helped me put together the outfit. Uh, their, I don't know what this person's name is in Second Life, I can't remember, but their name on Fiverr is Tinker Jet, Tinker underscore Jet. So, so she, she was walked you around to stores she, and helped you put your avatar together? Exactly. <laughs> she teleported me. She's like, okay, do this. and. <laughs> got me some standard animations and that's things, a great service classes and all this stuff it was great it, i think it was like i can't remember exactly i think it was around 50 dollars uh and then it was you know the cost yeah. in, in in linden dollars of like whatever the <laughs> stuff i was buying you know and now you have this fantastic looking avatar yeah it's, I love um, it. it's amazing yeah so what <laughs> so what can we expect from titmouse in the coming year and will we see you back in second life yes you will see me in second life um i think uh that the the like a good upcoming show to check out uh is the second season of uh star trek lower decks is premiering in august oh, yes. that's a show that's come up there'll be more big mouth uh coming up later in the year um I'm trying to think of what other shows are premiering soon there's a cool thing we did a series of music videos for this new band called area 21 that's kind of like an animated band or a duo mm -hmm. similar in, in a lot of ways to gorillas and the first couple i think of those music videos have launched and you can expect more of those i feel like the second life community will enjoy the tone of those videos they're real real weird that that should be fun and uh yeah just tons of cartoons we'll just keep making them uh and you well, know, I look forward look, to it. Look at our if you look at at, at Titmouse Inc. like Titmouse Incorporated, Titmouse Inc. on one word on Twitter. That's probably where the best way to find out what Titmouse is up to. All the latest news. Uh, also, for yeah. the viewers, if you look in the description of the YouTube video uh, right now, we have a link to the Titmouse website and actually uh, the destination link for the uh, Titmouse event uh, venue over here that we're sitting at. So you can actually come and visit and watch these cartoons until, I believe it's until the end of May. I don't remember the exact date. And um, they're 90 minutes long, they're on demand. You walk in and then they'll start playing. And they were very entertaining. I was here for the uh, premiere with the VIPs last Friday and it was great. 
Um, I just want to give you a chance to say anything you want to the viewers, because I'm going to wrap it up in just a, a minute or two. Uh, if you want to let them know anything else going on with you or Titmouse. Oh, mm -hmm. man, I don't know. <laughs> viewers, I hope this interview was not too boring <laughs> and you learned something about the studio and please watch our cartoons i don't know <laughs> that's I perfect didn't, I didn't have a sign off prepared <laughs> i i put you on the spot there didn't i it was perfect i'm gonna cam around a little bit um but i really wanted to thank you chris for being here maybe afterwards if you have a few minutes we'll go smash some stuff in the smash cage i want to show everybody the viewers there's a smash cage over here you walk in and you'll probably get an axe like chris had one and you can get to <laughs> smash uh things uh but thank you everyone for watching don't forget to check out our second life community blogs for more information about lab gab in the future and remember uh, stay safe stay home and stay Stay virtual. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everyone. Thanks again, Chris. Thank you. That was great. All right.